data in the world, and also very good at uh, you know the Hubble Space Telescope, but not very good at bringing those two together. And um, that's because there is so much information at macro that you have to become a specialist at macro. And there's so much information at micro that you have to become a specialist at micro. <coughs> Specialists at micro have a difficult time understanding the language of the specialist at macro because it's all language is all specialized. And that, that makes for separation of communication. That makes for um, sharing of differences rather than similarities. Inner imagination. My inner 
this today is to say, if you wish to do this work, you have to meditate. But you have to meditate the world. You have to take pieces of the world, and as Rudolf Steiner said, give them back to God. And you do that by entering a kasha. So a kasha is this A in the center of the diagram. And a kasha means consciousness. And the alchemists understood that everything <coughs> has a consciousness. It, it just is arranged so that not everything has its consciousness of itself in itself. The only beings that have the consciousness of the self in the self are human beings. And the reason they are the only ones is so that they can use that self-consciousness to become all the other consciousness in the field of Akasha. We are the rectifiers in the great vibrational system called the universe with consciousness. That's why we can take minerals and change them into medicines or into concrete. We have the free will to do that. But the issue of Akasha means that the human consciousness is a kind of magic decoder ring in the universe of potential consciousnesses. And the, the reason why the humans have that particular freedom in their akasha is so that they can um, bring into the field of the akasha as it was created new things. like this building. So a squirrel has to deal with what it has, or a house, or a building. But we can take what comes from nature and transform it through consciousness into something else. And that force of being able to do that, that is the goal of the alchemical work that is, could be called the stone, the great, the great alchemical stone. And why is it a stone? Well, that's a long, long story, but you have to understand what is the consciousness of a stone in the cosmos. The consciousness of the stone in cosmos is total lawful order. The mineral realm understands lawfulness. And because the minerals can understand lawfulness, they're totally selfless. You just kind of walk on them and break them up and put them in prison and turn them into things that we would like to communicate to somebody else with. And then we call it a silica chip. But we have the consciousness to take this, the beings who are totally selfless, who don't, who don't take anything, but give everything, that's mineral consciousness. And in order for the alchemists to go into mineral consciousness, they have to get rid of all of the expectations of the self. And they have to go to the place where the minerals live, which is sleep and dream, in order to dialogue with them. If they dialogue with the minerals here, then they just become slaves. Because all we can do here is abstract our knowledge of the mineral realm. mineral becomes a resource rather than a being, rather than a, a consciousness, becomes a thing. <coughs> and it's a 
same with plants, and it's the same with animals. And we get industrial livestock, or HMO, which is another sort of form of <laughs> industrial livestock. Uh, so the, so the, the, the force of abstraction is the challenge because it separates everything from everything else and makes <coughs> specialist consciousness. And so the alchemical worldview is first I separate, yeah, you know, but then I have to recombine. And when I, I recombine, I have to understand that the recombining is the opposite of the process of separating. And that the protocol for separating and recombining is what is known in the tradition as the alchemical wedding. When I separate and recombine in the proper way, I get synergy. the entity that I'm working with has been formed by nature to fall into a material, into a manifestation. The manifestation carries with it the imprint of what we could call, say, the gods or whatever your particular belief is, it came, it's, it's what in philosophy is called the given, which is, we can avoid theology by just saying that. So it's the given, nature is the given. You can't really change, you can modify it, but you can't create it. You're trying, but all we can do is take pieces of it and replicate it. So, so that's given, and it manifests in such a way that it's not free. It's extremely wise, but it doesn't have the freedom to make a house out of a miracle. It doesn't have the freedom to take water and sequester it in concrete so that it's going to take a really long time for that water to get back into the system. One of the biggest sources of the loss of moisture is concrete because it combines chemically 